I have a TikTok now. Follow me there at It's Karen Terry. There are characters too, not just objects for the woman to pine over. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about love triangles. Yes, love triangles. We are all realistic here, and we know that most roleplay is really about shipping. And we also know that finding the right shipping partner is hard enough. But what about finding two? Well, if you do, the possibilities of a love triangle suddenly open up. And that's what we're going to talk about today. My tips for writing and roleplaying love triangles. And when I say love triangles in this video, I'm talking about any romance that involves three or more characters, and then drama ensues. For example, Elizabeth Bennet choosing between Mr. Darcy and Mr. Wickham, or Katniss Everdeen choosing between Peta and Gale, or all of the endless configurations among the cast of A Midsummer Night's Dream. For the purposes of this video, these all qualify as love triangles, or whatever combinations you can think of. The first few tips are going to be about writing love triangles in general, and then we're going to jump over to the roleplay tips. Depending on how exactly your situation is set up and what exactly you're building to, sometimes when you try to write a love triangle, you can accidentally write a third wheel. Avoid doing this. You and anyone else that's reading the love triangle and is actually interested in reading the love triangle is not looking for this, and they're going to see it coming a mile away. You can avoid this by making sure all three, or more, whatever you want, characters are fully and completely developed. They should have likes and dislikes, a background history, and goals. I've got a whole playlist of character development, which I'm going to link for you guys up in the card, but I recommend specifically for these purposes to watch my video that's the top five things you need to know about your character, my video about goals, and my video about how to do the best roleplay characters. That's going to be the ones that are really the meaningful ones for what we're talking about here today. So go to that playlist, find those videos, that's what's going to set you up for success with making sure all three characters are fully developed. And if you want to go even more in-depth, I have a book called 365 Days of Character Development, which you guys can get on Amazon. There's a Kindle version, a paperback version, um, whatever you want, essentially. And it goes through daily writing prompts. Now, you don't have to fill out all 365. That's a little bit overkill. But if you choose a sampling of the ones that you like and fill that out for all three characters, it's going to help you develop them more evenly. But at the end of the day, whatever you choose to do, make sure you spread it out equally between all characters. Now, you can still fall into the traps of bad love triangles if you have all of your characters fully developed, if you make one particular configuration or pairing super obvious. That's going to destroy all of the drama of a love triangle. So if that's what you're going for, don't do this. Allow for will they, won't they moments between all combinations. If you have the classic one woman, two suitors configuration, then make sure both suitors are viable choices for the woman in question, and that there isn't one that's the obviously better choice for the woman. In addition to that, develop how the two suitors interact with and feel about each other. They're characters too, not just objects for the woman to pine over. What would each suitor do if the woman ended up choosing them? What if she didn't choose them? What would they do then? Even if you know who she's going to choose in the end, work these things out in your mind and write the suitors with those ideas in mind. And don't forget, a trio where you have two characters ending up together and one character gets left out is not the only viable combination for love triangles. Maybe no one gets together, or maybe they all three get together and form a polycule, or maybe the suitors say goodbye to the protagonist and they get with each other and leave them out in the cold. Don't rule anything out. Instead, make sure whatever the final configuration is, it's meaningful for all of the characters involved. Let's look at an example of a love triangle where the choice in the end was incredibly meaningful. Katniss and Gale and Peeta of The Hunger Games. So this is an old franchise, but spoiler warning, I guess. In the end, Katniss chooses Peeta, not Gale. And why does she do that? It's because her experience inside The Hunger Games fundamentally changed her as a person, and she can never go back. That means narratively, and also probably how it would go down in real life, 
She can't choose Gale. She must choose Peta. He's the only option that will truly understand the trauma that she's been through because he went through it too. Doesn't mean Gale's a bad guy or that he would be bad for Katniss, just means that Peta means something for her. Do the same thing for the final choice in your love triangles. And don't forget what I said a moment ago, don't just go with the standard configurations if that's not what makes sense. Whatever you choose, make sure that it means something for those characters. Okay, so we're gonna move now into the roleplay specific topics. While of course it is critical to trust anyone you're shipping with, when you add a third person to the mix, that trust is even more critical. These are just facts, and this doesn't just apply to roleplay, that trust, the more people you involve, becomes more critical the more people you add in any situation. Now, specifically in roleplay, you can get around this by having one person play two of the roles and one person playing one of the roles in the love triangle. However, if you do it this way, make sure that you don't end up with one character being underdeveloped because the player with the two characters really ends up favoring one over the other. It's hard to not have a favorite. We're human. We have preferences. But you're not really playing a love triangle that's interesting if the person playing the two characters really has one that's their main character and the other is kind of just a side character. So instead, what I actually find most successful is to have three different people each playing one character and there's just lots of out of character communication between the three of you. So some questions that you might ask yourself to make sure that you've got that communication. Does everyone involved know the ending you're working towards? Is everyone okay with that ending? If you start feeling like things should change, have you talked to both of the other people about it? Do you think if they felt that way, they would tell you? Sometimes these conversations need to happen both in like a group chat with the three of you or one-on-one -on -one individually between certain pairs of people. But whatever you do for these conversations, make sure it doesn't turn into two people ganging up on one person. Remember, we are trying to build trust here, which means everyone's opinion needs to be listened to and respected. If this is your struggle, I recommend Googling for polyamorous relationship advice. Knowing how that goes and how that type of communication works will help because it's really the same thing. All the same feelings get involved, all the same mistakes can be made, just without touching and of course much lower stakes because it's role play and not real life. Do not have this role play be your one and only role play. I don't actually recommend anyone just having one ship be their one and only role play like in general. But here it's especially important. People get busy, people find new favorites, people lose interest. Always have other options available to you. Other ships, other hobbies, other interests, etc, etc, you get the idea. This is so that if things go sour, you don't have to completely start over with what you do with your free time. All right, so that's the video. In conclusion, these are my tips for writing and role-playing love triangles. First, fully develop all three characters. Next, don't make one pairing or a combination the obvious choice. Do, however, make the final choice meaningful for the characters. Make sure you're role-playing with partners you trust, and make sure also that you have other options available. All right, so what do you guys think? Have you ever role-played a love triangle before? Let me know down below how that went. And if not, are you inspired to try it now? Let me know that also down below. And don't forget, as always, of course, to make it a great day.